Go for it. All right, Jay. All right, guys. So I'm going to be talking to you about why video games should be considered a sport. So preview, we're going to be talking about esports popularity. We're going to be talking about esports and what they are. Practice time, coaches, and the future of what esports will be once it's out of the, I guess, beta phase it's in there now. So esports popularity. Esports is huge. I actually wanted to tell you guys a story real quick about my experience with esports. Three years ago, I got into a game called Counter-Strike Global Offensive. It's a first-person shooter, and at the time, it was one of the only esports first-person shooters that was actually kind of, you know, growing. And I got onto a team with my friend Tom, who I've known for six years, only online, online, online relationship. And we actually started getting to competitions with a company called Razer. If you haven't heard of Razer, they make keyboards, mice, they make all sorts of gaming stuff, they even make phones now. And we actually made money off of this. I made about $500 off of 10 different competitions. They were really small, like low-end competitions. You can make way more, as you can see. The industry has actually made $696 million this year alone. It's not even over yet. That's not, that's, you know, minus the leagues that are going to be happening at Christmas time. And we actually made some pretty good money. I got a mouse from Razer from winning a competition as well. So it's pretty cool. And I had a really good experience with it. Uh, thanks to Horton. Horton has talked about the celebrity investors that you guys probably know a lot of these people up here, I'm assuming. Especially if you're in sports. That was rough for you guys. So the... Um, celebrity investors that are up here are Alex Rodriguez, Steve Aoki, Magic Johnson, and Shaquille O'Neal. These are the teams they own, these are the games that the teams play, and they've actually really gotten into investing. I believe Alex Rodriguez has put $50 million into the industry alone, and Steve Aoki is like ridiculous. I, mean, I, I, I don't even remember what number he was, it was like it was like 35 or 40 million or something, it's, it's crazy, like investments. And he was a, he was a video that I want to show you guys just about, about eSports. So yeah, it's pretty crazy. Esports is pretty nuts. That was just, I just found the video. I thought you guys would like to see it as like a little, just what it's kind of about, uh, how huge it is, how huge the industry is. So it's kind of hard to see. Okay, so about esports, in case you guys are super new, because I'm, I'm sure not everyone here is a you know video gamer. Uh, the esports have been around for a very long time. They've been around since the 80s, actually. 1980, and they first started off as being a arcade sport, and people would go to big arcades where there'd be Pac-Man, and they started for competitions of who could get the highest level, most score, all that, and the industry started to go up and up and up, and when PC gaming started becoming more consumer grade, where people were getting their hands on PCs, and there were games like Doom, people started going, hmm, this is, this is like a real thing, we could actually start doing competitions like this for money. And that is how it's gotten to the point it's at now. Esports is simply, if you guys haven't gotten this, is simply a electronic sport. It's a video game that has been turned into an act of competition from BBC. Like football players play football together, esports players play computer games against each other competitively. Just like sports, esports require practice. And when I say practice a lot, I can speak for myself, it's a lot of practice. I play, I, I'm guilty, I play for about four to six hours a day, if I don't have a lot of school work, just on any game I'm playing on. Specifically right now, it's Call of Duty World War II. Love that game, oh my gosh. Esports players practice for roughly 12 to 14 hours a day, and they're also put on special workout and eating programs so that they don't you know, gain weight. It's actually, it's a lot of physical activity along with gaming. So when they're not gaming, they're normally doing something physical or something with health. That's from Harrison. Football players, practice for about 90 minutes earlier in the day of actual physical practice. That's, you know, that's 
actually being on the field doing practice. And later in the day, for about two hours, they do visual practice um, for physical um, and physical training along with that in that two hours. So they'll do stuff like re-watching games, going over techniques that they'll do. That's, that's what they would be doing within those two hours. Here are some cool pictures of some eSports teams that are, uh, like this is like a setup. So this would be like a normal setup. My room specifically would be like one desk and then one monitor. That's kind of like what I do, personally. Esports coaches. So yes, esports actually have coaches. There is a person that stands behind you and tells you what you should do and what your tactics should be. Coaches are there to be the the, the mother of the team. So basically, if a, if a player wants to be in an FPS game, I'm going to be talking about this map in a second. This is super important, specifically to why coaches are important. The skill plays that a player must know are not always obvious. And it's nice to have someone who knows a lot about the technical side of the game that can help you in getting a one-up on your opponent. So for example, a coach is there to be a strategist for your team. So on this map, this is from Counter-Strike. This was my favorite map. This is DE Dust 2 is the name of it. It's Dust. And it's this big desert map. And basically, this is where one team spawns, that's where another team spawns. And you need to know the call for the entire map. So you're all talking over comms the entire time. So when one of your teammates is in upper B, which is, it's a tunnel that you walk through, you'd say, guys, I'm in tons. There's one or two guys that I see. So it's a call out. If you are going long A, you would say, guys, we're gonna go long A with the bomb. So, Cause you have to plant the bomb on the sites to win the game. That's kind of the whole point of it. So yeah, so there's a huge, coaches are huge in esports. They're actually huge at running teams. A lot of them are ex-professional players that have gone on to becoming coaches. So it's players that these people would be where the, the players are, but they've retired and gone on to teaching or gone on to talking about the sport and strategists. This, these are a lot of the games that are esports now. The future of esports. Physical work should be worked into esports more. That's a personal opinion of mine. I think that it needs to. It's being worked in, but it's not enough that it's for everyone. Virtual reality is not at the level right now, price-wise, that anyone like you and me could just go out and go, oh, okay, I'm gonna get this. This is a Virtuix Omni. The Virtuix Omni is basically a 4D version of video games. You stand up into this platform with special shoes on. You can get a gun, you can get a basketball, like a, like a, you know, like a fake one and you basically do this or you do this depending on what you're doing and you can run on the platform and you can do everything on it. They go for about $15,000. And then it's $2,000 with shoes and then it's a lot more for each one of the components. So you can only buy in retail right now. You can only buy them for like a company or for like an event. So you can't buy them on your own. Virtual reality on the other hand, like the headset and controllers are about from, from $500 to $1,000 now. So they're becoming more reasonable and probably will, will be worked into this scene more. But at the moment, it's a little too much. I believe it should be worked in, so that's a little bit of a downside for me. I can't wait to see people actually be more active with the esports. The industry is going to be achieving $1.5 billion by the year 2020, that thank you to Warman. That is insane. That's crazy huge. I cannot believe that sitting in front of a computer playing a video game is earning people $1.5 billion overall. Like that's incredible. Esports is a way for everyone to get into sports. Anyone sitting in this room right now can become an esports player. Even if you've never played before, it takes you a couple of years to get the hang, hang of it to be a professional. It really can happen and anyone can really become an esports player, which is personally why I believe that it should be considered a sport, video games in total, because it's anyone can do it. Conclusion, esports are the future of entertainment, BBC. Basically, over the past few years, you guys might know what streaming is. Streaming is basically where someone broadcasts something onto the internet that people can watch. And it has become so huge. Esports are huge. Millions of people watch esports. Like, just like people watch football, people watch esports. It's insane for everything. There's a ton of potential for growth. As I was saying, we can get more physical with it and get virtual reality. I can't wait for the day when you just have to put on a little mask and, and, a, and a gun and run around the room. I cannot wait for that. That's really <laughs> exciting for me. Uh, if you guys want to check out some games that are happening now and get more into esports, League of Legends is a huge game that is actually having competitions right this second. It's crazy, and you should definitely check them out. It's on Twitch.com's live streaming.
In review, esports is the future of entertainment. It's huge and it's growing very quickly. Many fans are joining it and I really think you guys should check it out too. Esports requires a lot of practice besides just physical practice. It requires a lot of mental practice too. And coaches are just as important on esports as they are on actual physical sports. So thank you for listening.